In this video, we're going to introduce, configure, and verify policy-based routing on a Cisco router. Let's begin. Policy-based routing on a Cisco IOS router is all about having special routing for certain types of traffic. For example, in our current topology, a packet that's going from R7 to R1 would go through the frame relay network up to R4 through its serial 1 slash 1.478 subinterface. It would be routed then down to R5 based on the routing protocol and metrics that are in use. And then over to R3, and R3 would forward it to its final destination of R1. R1 has a loopback address of 1.1.1.1. And R7 has a loopback address of 7.7.7.7. Policy-based routing gives us the control to override the default behavior of the routing table. We could tell, for example, R4, that if traffic is sourced from the IP address of 7.7.7.7, and it's coming in on the serial 1 slash 478 interface, to go ahead and use R3 as the next hop for that specific packet instead of the traditional next hop of R5 based on the routing table. To implement policy-based routing is three basic things. Number one, we're gonna create an access control list to identify the traffic that should be policy-based routed. Second, we're gonna create a route map, which is a giant if-then statement that says, if traffic matches this access control list, which is identifying our interesting traffic for PBR, then I want you to go ahead and give special treatment, in our case, the special treatment would be saying set the next hop to be R3. And the third step is to apply our policy, and we do that with an IP policy command, where we apply the route map to the interface where we want that router to look at all the traffic coming in on that interface to make a decision whether or not that traffic should be treated specially and policy-based routed or not. So let's implement policy-based routing based on any traffic that is sourced from 7777, which is R7's loopback, if it's coming in on serial 1 slash 1.478, that subinterface, we want to go ahead and use the next top of R3 if that happens. So our first step is to identify that interesting traffic by creating an access control list. So let's go into configuration mode and do a do show access list. Let's want to find out if we have any access list currently in place. We don't want to add on to an existing access list accidentally. And with no access list in place, let's create a single entry that's matching on any IP traffic source from 7777 going anywhere. And for our demo, that'll be our interesting traffic that we're going to use as part of PBR. Next, we'll create a route map called PBR. And as part of the if-then statement, the if portion of this route map, we're going to say we want to match IP address 100, which is to say we're looking for traffic that matches access list 100. And if we find that traffic, this is the then portion, we want to set the IP next hop to 10.34.0.3 which is the next hop of R3, which would cause the traffic to be forwarded over the serial link instead of the normal path going through R5. Now, the final step would be to apply this to the interface. We need to apply it to serial 1 slash 1.478. However, before you and I apply this policy, let's just verify the default path that would normally be used. And we're gonna do that by making a road trip over here to the top right-hand side of our topology to R7. So we'll go to that tab. And from R7, let's do a quick trace route to 1.1.1.1. And all of the routers, the last octet matches the router number. So the path here is showing it's going to R4, R5, R3, and R1. So our path is from R7 to R4, to R4 to R5, R5 to R3, and R3 to R1. And the 1.1.1 address is that loop back that's hanging off of R1. If we did that same trace route again, and we sourced it from our own loopback on R7 of 7777, we should still take the exact same path because the routes to that 1.1.1.1 network are still the same. So just to confirm, we're still going through R4, R5, R3, and finally to R1. Now let's implement our policy-based routing back on R4. So we're back on R4. If we issue the command show access list, and I'm putting a do in front of it because I'm in configuration mode, there's our current access list 100. And if we want to take a look at our current route maps, including the one that we just configured, we can do a show route-map. And now, for the final third piece, we need to go into that interface, serial 1 slash 1.478, and use the command IP policy, the keyword route-map, and the name of the route map that we just created. And now, policy-based routing is effective for any traffic that's coming in on that serial 1 slash 1.478 subinterface. We can verify our policy with a show IP policy command. And the show IP policy command indicates that we've got a serial 1 slash 1.478 right here that has the route map called PBR applied so that any inbound packets are going to be considered and compared against that route map. Another command that I really enjoy regarding PBR is the debug of IP policy. So let's turn that on right here on R4 as well. And that will show us the details regarding packets. Are they going to be routed normally or do they match the ACL in the route map? And are they going to be policy based routed? It'll give us all of that detail. And to test this, let's go back over to R7 on the far right of our topology. 
And on R7, let's do a trace route to 1.1.1.1. Now, this traffic is not being sourced from 7777. So it should not be matching our policy map. And as a result, it's going to be routed normally through 4, 5, 3, and 1. And the cool thing is, if we go back to the console of R4, where we have our debug running, and here on R4, it's showing us that we had all this traffic that was sourced from 10.4.78.7. That's the serial interface of R7. The destination address was 1111. And the policy was rejected. Now, that sounds pretty bad, but it simply means that it didn't match the policy-based routing. And as a result of not matching the policy, it was forwarded normally. However, let's give ourselves a little bit of space here, and let's go back to R7. And this time, let's do a trace route, but we'll source it from 7777, the loopback on R7. And that should trigger policy-based routing and set the next hop over to R3, which will change our path through the network. So let's go ahead and do a trace route to 1.1.1.1. We'll source it from our loopback zero address. And if we look at the path, it went to R4. That's from R7 to R4. R4 made a decision based on policy-based routing to send it over to R3 as the path. So it went to R3. And then from R3, it went to R1. So we're skipping R5 due to the policy-based routing that took place on R4. And we could verify that also by going back to the console of R4 and the debugs indicate that the policy was matched and it was policy-based routed through the router, which caused that next hop to be R3, and that's why it took the serial path instead of using the traditional path through R5. I have had a great time in this video. I'm so glad you joined me for it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.